Okay, real world housing for the fortunate few. A successful London couple in their early 30s who want to start a family find a flat in East Putney in 2021. It's 90 square metres with two bedrooms and a shared garden and a 1960s block. Not exactly a palace, but a good interim home in a decent location and on the market for 725000 They're lucky because the sale of their first flat left them 125 k after all taxes and fees as a deposit. They need to borrow 600 k but with salaries of 80000 and 70000 combined to 150000 it's only a times four multiple and they're well within the affordability range, even including their £750 a month car payment. The bank's offer is 2.25% on a 25-year mortgage, fixed for two years with monthly repayments of £2,617. Of course, there are the usual bills and subscriptions, council tax, utilities, media, insurances, and naturally that shiny German car. A total of an extra £1,575 a month. So their fixed monthly outgoings are pretty close to 42 k but what's their after-tax income? Well, both are opting to put 8% of their salaries into private pensions, which again, because they're very lucky, their employers match. So they bring home £3,875 and £4,325, a combined total of 8.2 k a month. For the average earner in the UK on 31000 a year, taking home 2000 a month, they are rolling in it. They are so fortunate they have £4,000 a month to spend on food, entertainment, clothes, holidays, hobbies, furnishings, gadgets, taxis and savings. They splash out on food, spending 600 a month at the supermarket, two holidays a year, setting them back £800 a month, restaurants once a week for 400 a month, 200 on clothes, 200 on entertainment and £800 on hobbies, gadgets, throw cushions and Uber which leaves them exactly £1,000 to put into a share ISA each month as they dream about their future. It's 2023 and their two-year fixed rate is up, but now the best mortgage rate they can get is 6.4% because the Bank of England have raised base rates to 4.75% to combat inflation. Their monthly repayments are £4,014, nearly £17,000 a year more. Not only that, their gas and electricity bill has gone up by £150 a month. Now their fixed monthly outgoings are £5,740. The first thing they stop is their savings, so they only have an extra £540 to find. They decide to take one big holiday, that's £250 saved. They only eat out twice a month, there's £200. Hobbies have to be cut back as well, so there's £90 less, and they're back to even. Their quality of life has suffered, like their plans to have children, and so is that of the places where they used to spend their money. Supermarkets sell lower volumes. Local restaurants go bust. The Forest Cabin Holiday Lodge has to close. The recession deepens as employers cut costs. No one sheds a tear for our couple because, compared with most, they're still living a luxurious life. As more people stop spending, apart from essentials, more businesses close. People, including private landlords, are forced to sell their properties to preserve capital or cover debts and house prices plummet. Only three years after they moved into the home that would launch their family, they discover it's now only worth 550000 But they still owe the bank 575000 And then one of them is made redundant. The redundancy payment lasts them three months. Their savings are gone six months later. Only four months after that, the bank, apologetically, repossesses their home and, after an open auction at which they later discover the bank sold to one of its own subsidiaries, they still owe over £50,000. Childless, homeless, in debt, clinging to a single wage and selling old electronics on eBay to pay the bills, they're still thankful about how fortunate they've been. Welcome to 2025.